Retro Food Fans. Today we are going all the way back to 1947 to make a quintessential dish of the 40s. It's not so popular now, it was then. Let's bring it back. You're gonna love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Yester Kitchen and I'm Jill. Thank you so much for being here. So today we are gonna go back to 1947 and talk about chicken a la king. What is it? Oh my God, it is just a creamy chicken dish with pimentos and peas and mushrooms and it is fabulous. Now this was very popular in the 40s even though it was invented quite a while ago. Actually I've got four different stories of how it was created and we can pick which one we like. But this is the perfect, perfect dish to put inside your noodle ring. Noodle ring? Noodle ring. It's so easy to make and it's just, I mean, it's just, the 1940s would be so happy if you did the whole thing. So we're gonna get started and then I'll tell you some of those stories. So we've got ourselves a large pot with about a medium heat on it. And we're gonna start with two tablespoons of butter. And we're gonna let that start melting. So while it's melting, this particular recipe, I've been wanting to do chicken a la king for a while, but I haven't found a recipe I really loved. This one is from the American Woman's Cookbook, 1947. Look, where is my camera? Look at that gorgeous thing. And you've got to see the first page. Hold on, I'm getting there. Look at that. June 1948 to Muriel from Kay. I don't know who Muriel was, I don't know who Kay was, but I am beyond honored to be able to peek into their friendship when one was passing this book on as a gift. And now it's mine. And it's like, I feel like I'm holding history. And this is one of the many reasons why I love what I do. So our butter is just about melted. We're gonna go ahead and add one green pepper, super fine chop. See, right there, it's really, really, oh, there you go, really fine chop. We're gonna add that right into our butter. And then we're gonna add a cup of sliced mushrooms. I already buy them pre-sliced, you can do whatever you like. So, the cup is around there. And then you're just gonna stir this up until all your vegetables get soft. Stir it around. So while our vegetables are cooking away, there are four of the most popular stories about Chicken Olive King came to be. Who knows? Pick what you like. So story number one, there was a very famous horse breeder in the 1880s by the name of Foxhall Keene. And he used to frequent the restaurant Delmonico's in New York. And one day he was talking to the chef and he said, man, I wish there was a creamy chicken dish with pimentos. And the chef said, I gotcha. And he made chicken a la king, but he called it chicken a la king for Foxhall Keene. And then later the name was changed either because King sounded more regal or because when people were saying Keen, people were just hearing King and it just turned into fo Foxhall. It just turned into Chicken a la King. That's one story. Story number two is pretty much the exact same story I just told you, but instead of taking place at Delmonico's in New York, it took place in London. But same Foxhall King, same recipe, same story. Who knows? Story number three is there was a chef at the Brighton Beach Hotel in New York who created this dish for a Mr. and Mrs. E. Charles King, K-A-N-G, and named the dish after them. And hold on, let's stir our veggies. Wanna keep them moving. See, they're starting to cook down. And for the very, very large pieces of mushrooms, I would cut them in half, just because they kind of get a little more uniform. You don't have to. And story number four is that it was created in the 1890s at the Bellevue Hotel in Philadelphia by a cook named Bill King. And he named it after himself. You pick. I'm not sure either. I'm gonna kinda go with the first one, Foxhall King, Delmonico's, but who knows? Any one of them, we still have an amazing dish. And why was it so popular in the 40s if it was invented in the early, in the late 1800s? It was just, it, you know, company, service, elegant dinner parties, home dinner parties, dress up dinner parties. It was just, became a very, known as a very refined dish to serve the company. And put it in that noodle ring and you will do the 1940s proud. So check out our vegetables. See, you really want them cooked down because this is really the last time they're gonna get cooked. 
you're, they're going to be added right before you put everything together. So you really want them not, you know, destroyed, but you want them cooked down like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our veggies. And I'm using a slotted spoon so the butter stays in the pot. And you're just going to get your veggies out of here. And let the butter stay here because now you're going to make your gravy. And you definitely need butter for gravy. And don't worry if you don't get every last piece out. You'll be fine. Just get as much as you can. I'm kind of sad that this went out of fashion. So that's why I'm here to bring it back. I mean, this is just so classic and so good. And now to the butter, we're going to add two tablespoons of flour and a cup chicken broth. And anytime I add flour or cornstarch or anything, I always use a whisk because that just breaks up the flour. And as you see, we have a little few little veggies in there. It's okay. They'll survive. The dish will be fine. So now you're going to turn your fire up a little bit. And you're just going to kind of cook this till it gets a little thickened. Okay, so our gravy is thickening up. It's not like hugely thick, but it's definitely got some thickness to it and that's fine because we're now going to add a whole bunch of good stuff okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to add two cups of cooked diced chicken and i just got a rotisserie chicken at the market if you want to cook up chicken feel free but you know we like easy so into the pot goes your chicken and you're going to add about a half to three quarter cups of peas. I use them from frozen because I like those. I don't like canned peas at all. They're way too mushy. Frozen peas, you're not too bad. And then you're going to give that a little stir and you're going to add back all of your cooked veggies. In my glorious 1970s dish. And you're going to stir that around just like this and get it heated through. So we're gonna let it go for about two more minutes. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. Take a look. Our stew, our almost chicken a la king, is all warmed up and all the vegetables, all the chicken, all the peas, everything's been heated through. And the reason you want it warm is because now you're gonna take it off the heat and add the last of the magic. So to this, I'm gonna add one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. And because the original recipe has requested a pimento cream chicken dish, we have a four ounce jar of pimentos. You just buy these kind of in the aisle where they sell the olives and the pickles. They're just right there for you. Usually on the top shelf. We're also gonna add two egg yolks. If you forgot how to separate an egg, check out that video. But in go the two egg yolks and that's what's gonna thicken it up for you. And of course, it wouldn't be chicken ala king without sherry. And I've got three tablespoons of sherry I'm gonna add in there. Along with a teaspoon of salt. And some, I don't know, maybe about six or eight or 10 grinds of pepper. I'm a pepper fan. If you're not, don't put as much in. This part is purely to taste. Well, really it all is. If you don't drink sherry, don't add it. If you really like sherry, add more. And now we're gonna put it back on the heat just for a few minutes, just so it can thicken up. And you know what? The recipe called for removing it from the heat during the addition of the eggs. I think you'd be okay, but I'm going with the original recipe like I always do. All right, so let's just cook this for maybe about another two or three minutes. So it's been about two or three minutes. Take a look. Our chicken ala king is just beautiful. It's just, Look at all those pretty colors, and it's just this nice warming stew kind of thing. Now, of course, I didn't make the noodle ring because I already made it for you, but really, you can serve it in so many ways. You can serve it over plain egg noodles. You can do the noodle ring. You can serve it over white rice. You can take just toast and cut it on the diagonal, put it on the plate, and pour your chicken ala king over it. Kind of similar to what we did with Welsh rabbit. Yes, it's not Welsh rabbit, it's Welsh rabbit. And there's also something called a patty shell, which is about that big. That's what it looks like. It's um, kind of like a puff pastry that's in a kind of a bowl shape. And you can pour it in there. That was also very classic 40s and 50s because it was very impress your guest kind of thing. But today, 
We're doing straight up comfort noodles, chicken on the king. And really all that goes happens now is you pour it over the top. And I'm serving it in a bowl because it is very stew-like and just makes me happy. And there you go. Look at that. Ah, close up. Beautiful thing right there. Chicken Isle King. It's from the late 1800s, but very, very popular in the 40s. So really, you can just celebrate a whole bunch of decades with this. If you'd like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Friday. In the meantime, here's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even chicken a la king from the 40s or earlier, has a story. I'll see you in the next video.